Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start this edition of the mike wagner show is brought to you by picture this photo books where remembering is the key ingredient how beautiful your mother looked at her wedding and even more so at yours and who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs the holidays are coming what better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time whatever gift of grandma's recipes or just because those smiles and tears will melt your heart call karen shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bringing your memories back to life. They're whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call one 800 303 Three nine six zero, or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get twenty percent off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon and. Paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow their competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Evil Love and enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, remembering is a key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss Grandma's meatballs, huh? I am sure you guys can confess. Well, the holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift for remembrance makes a laugh and cry out at the same time? What if a gift for Grandma's recipes are just because? Little smiles and tears will just melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw, Picture This Photo Books at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, along with Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Apple, and more. Take, take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today and check out all the great merchandise at themikewidenershow.com and also on amazon.com, the Mike Widener Show podcast, T-shirts, pop sockets, 
throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, and more. Makes great gifts 24-7. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Me and Molson Zia store available on Amazon as well, too. And also some cool merchandise. Make sure you check it out. And don't forget to uh, support us on Anchor FM as well as PayPal and also the MikeWagnerShow.com. Please support generously today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who's a composer, educator, and producer from Seattle, Washington. He's the owner of 8 Cents Productions, and uh, his latest release was accepted at 122 Fest and won 135 awards and nominations, including 34 for Best Score. And we'll find out why on that. And, of course, he received his Bachelor of Music from Indiana University and has been in the Pacific Northwest ever since. And his music has been featured in numerous TV shows and films like with um, The Cold Light of Day, also The Blind Side, and, um, you know, just many, many more. And he's just done so much stuff. And, um, you know, film-wise, we'll be talking about um, a couple. It gets in their blood, and as the earth turns, and why it's so significant. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from Plus Studios in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, the multi-talented composer, educator, and producer from Seattle, Washington, Edmund Hartman. Ed, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you very much for having me. Well, it's great to have you on board, Ed. So you're a composer, educator, and producer from Seattle, Washington. You're the owner of 8 Cents Productions, and you also um, ha- you know, had your uh, latest um, project accepted at 122 Film Fest. You won 135 awards and nominations and 34 for best score and uh, you received the bachelor of music from indiana university and your music has been featured in numerous tv shows and films like with the blind side cold side of night and uh, you also have um your two projects it gets in your blood and the latest as the earth turns as a huge milestone we'll talk about that and before we get into all that ed tell us how i first got started well, uh, the interesting thing about my, my trajectory is uh, when I was a kid, I actually was into Super 8 film, and I still have those cameras. I, I need to bring them out and show people. Um, anyway, uh, I went into music pretty seriously, went to Indiana, got a degree in percussion and music from there. But I was always composing, in fact, uh, typically pissing off my professors uh, who want, you know, you're supposed to play repertoire that they're familiar with, and I would write music for my recitals and things like that. Uh, Anyway, and when I came out to Seattle, uh, I continued to perform quite a bit, but I also uh, started Composer's Concert Series, uh, and ever since, I've been kind of moving back and forth between composing and performing as a musician, Mm -hmm. again, as a percussionist primarily. But uh, my my keyboard skills are reasonable, so I can I can use a keyboard to compose, and then wh- and then I ran a drum shop for twenty five years in the middle of all this. Um, <laughs> just an aside, luckily closed it in two thousand seventeen, which was before the pandemic. Thank God, because I don't <laughs> think that we would have made it. And um, and then ever since then, uh, I I have my own uh, personal studio where I can teach, compose, and perform, and all that sort of, well, not perform, but uh, anyway, and I've been doing more and more composing. Over the years, um, more of my music was found its way through music licensing, which I also teach classes in, and individually, on how to get your film, music in film and TV. And that's individual songs, not necessarily scoring tracks, and that's how I've gotten music in the blind side and uh, other, other films like that. Um, anyway, and over the years, I've, I've done a lot of that, and that kind of matured my recording studio. Uh, as all that was going on, I started, and really, technology caught up to me, <clears throat> where um, I have a Macintosh, and uh, Logic is a great program for composing music, and it works very well, especially for scoring to picture. You can actually synchronize your music right to the screen, and that's something that's really only happened in the last 10 or 15 years, uh, seriously. And, and almost anybody can do it now. It can be almost paint by number. I mean, it's, it's almost ridiculously simple. <laughs> paint by number, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, you take a little thing of this and this, but that doesn't mean it's good. You know, it just it, means it, it's it sounds like Bob Ross. You put a little here, you put a little that's there. That's right. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Happy mistakes or whatever. So <laughs> anyway, uh, but I've been doing a lot of that and scoring short films in Seattle and and with people around the country, and then some features, documentaries, things like that. And then uh, something mind-boggling happened uh, in 2017. I was teaching a student of mine who's a mother of another student that I had taught years before, and uh, she started to take hand drum percussion lessons. 
And uh, I, I was showing her what I was doing on the scoring side, just kind of for fun. And I, and I had a video that's still on YouTube. It's a track that's kind of a Danny Elfman, Pee Wee Herman style that I had set against a scene from Buster Keaton's college, movie College. And it's a great little scene. And for whatever reason, it really perfectly synchronized itself. Uh, music has a funny way of doing that, even if you don't score it. At some point, some of the music is going to synchronize to some of the action. So anyway, mm-hmm. I played it for her, and she said, well, that's very interesting because, you know, I, I, I came into uh, the film estate of my great uncle who lived in Seattle. And um, I ha- we have this film, one of the, one of the films we have, I, it's silent, and I was wondering, would you be interested in scoring it? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, it was about a half an hour at that point. It was a 30-minute film. Over the next several months, I scored it uh, and got really heavily involved in it as producer as well. We discovered another 15 minutes of, of uh, film, I, I, and, and, and this thing just grew and grew and grew. It came out really pretty well, uh, and it's an orchestral and jazz score. Um, and, and because I, you know, I had some good support on this, we were able to mix it at Clatter and Did, which Din is now a Formosa studio in Seattle. And it's a phenomenal post studio where you can mix music to picture and all the rest of that and that brought the score quality up quite a bit uh it it started to gather some attention we decided to do a festival run and it just grew into this immense epic festival run with you know hundreds of festivals we submitted to and it got involved in many of them including the seattle international film festival which was actually the first one we submitted to and they wound up doing a wonderful screening, this is As the Earth Turns, uh, Mm -hmm. at the Egyptian Theater, which is a 1915 uh, theater in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So it was about the, you know, going back to the, when when Richard Leifert, the director, was born. Uh, Anyway, but it it just started to get into a lot of activity out there, and it's still out there. Um, Over the next couple of years, we promoted it. We got into the distribution. Um, It's on Amazon and Tubi. And then the really amazing part about it is it's going to be on Turner Classic Movies. I don't know when this program will air, but uh, on October 31st, Halloween, at 9 p.m. Pacific, or actually technically midnight, November 1st, East Coast. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and so that's where this whole thing's been leading up to. And so I'm heavily promoting that right now, trying to connect with everybody that's been involved over the past few years. So this brought me into filmmaking. Uh, through scoring, and uh, and now I'm kind of back to where I started, uh, you know, making movies and things like that. So my my whole there's been a really interesting cycle developing. Now over the years, I've created short music videos that have you know some have won awards and film festivals and things like that, and gotten heavily uh, involved in production. Uh, and then the 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 really the next big project that came out of this was a documentary that I originally made just as a support mechanism for As the Earth Turns. So it wound up, it took about two years to clear all the information from Disney and all the places this guy worked, because the backstory on him is pretty amazing. We can talk about that a little bit. Um, I'd love to hear more about it, but continue on. Yeah, so uh, this is a documentary that I developed called It Gets in Your Blood. And uh, Richard Leifert was a director. Uh, He lived from 1917 to uh, 1985, and um, he was born, he's almost identical to Orson Welles, and mm-hmm. the real question that everybody asks is, well, why don't we know who this guy is, and, and a lot, well, you, you have to kind of see this documentary, it's a short documentary, it's 14, 15 minutes, um, and it, it tries to answer that question on, on why, why he's not a, a name that you'd recognize out there, but uh, anyway, so that documentary it's in, I think it's in 106 festivals right now. Wow. And it's won uh, 82 awards nominations. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just, I've been to L.A. twice. I was at the Burbank Festival, and then I was just back, and it actually p- was p- uh, screened at the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood and Highland. And that was just a remarkable occasion, you know, just so the loops keep evolving. We did a lot with As the Earth Turns. I mean, we, we actually did a seven-day theatrical run 
in California. Why? Why would we do such a crazy thing? And I, I put uh, some other films with it of Lifers that we've been working with. Well, that was, of course, to uh, submit it to the Oscars in 2019. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> of course you would do that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and not that it was going to be accepted, but it, made, it got the film in front of a lot of people's eyes. And, mm. and when it, not only digitally on demand to the membership, but we, we actually put a, a thousand DVDs out to the producers and directors. And what's interesting in the last uh, month or two, I got an email back. I had been communicating with some people I knew and Joe Dante, who's great director. He did Gremlins and, you know, oh, the, the really wild, one of the Twilight Zone bits from the movie. I mean, this guy's just off the charts good he finally emailed me back he said man you know when i first saw as your turns i thought it was like a fraud i thought somebody somebody had put this together as a as a you know made newly made movie to look old and and that's not the only one that he's not the only one that's thought that on on uh, amazon there's been occasionally comments saying you know this this wasn't made in night and i if i could make this movie i would be spielberg myself because it, mm -hmm. it's it would be impossible to create something this authentic anyway he just emailed back and and said hi and he said yeah no i i, I really enjoyed the film and um anything i can do so that came from the and the re, the first time he saw that was from the screening video from the oscar thing so that proved at least somebody got it and, and i was and i was told by the you know by the the oscars uh, the, the, the or the 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 company that uh, threw the dvds out to the uh, membership that we would they would make sure that scorsese and spielberg would get a copy so you know they're still on my radar here <laughs> trying to connect with you know so again this thing never ends you know anyway so the the, the documentary continues to blossom and then what's happened is uh all of these projects have uh, found their way onto a, a DVD. Huh, and that's really interesting. And you know what? I love the backstory behind uh, As the Earth Turns in terms of predictions. And we'll uh, get to that in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundWeb Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve 11 endorsed by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Ghost Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show is brought to you by Picture of This Photo Books, remembering is a key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at a wedding and even more so yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs, huh? Well, the holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift for remembrance makes you laugh and cry at the same time? What if a gift for grandma's recipes are just because? Those mouths and tears will just melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw, Picture This Photo Books at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show, get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bring your memories back to life. The whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms and themikewidenershow.com. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today and check out the Mike Widener Show store at themikewidenershow.com and on amazon.com at the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to amazon.com and check out the Me and Molson Zia store for great books and merchandise, t shirts, hoodies, and more. Amazon.com slash Me and Molson Zia and support us on anchor fm as well as paypal and the mike widener show.com make sure you donate generously today we're here composer educator producer from seattle washington ed hartman here on the mike widener show and uh, you can also go to his um website at hartmanmusic.com and um i noticed you you're pulling something out from these as the earth turns looks like you're just digging 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 trying to get something else like come on little buddy let's get out of there and there um, it is <laughs> it, oh yeah it, it looks like it came out from 1937 it just jumped right out and um, you know you know what's great was i happened to watch 
watch it. And I have to say that um, this was an amazing sci-fi film from 1937, which predicts World War II, future technology and uh, climate change and um, the extreme need for peace. I mean, you. I mean, I have to say this. Whoever thought of this in 1937 really hit on the mark at this time. Well, this is what's what's really freakish about this, and and I, I gotta admit he he didn't. This wasn't completely an original script. It, it was loosely based on a 1915 novel, The Ma Man Who Rocked the Earth. Really? But that was more of a scientific novel, and he completely changed it 100 percent into a filmable movie. But what you have to understand about this is this was made by a 20 year old guy in Seattle, a filmmaker. And it was his ninth film. Ninth film? And he was film? 20. He had made wow. nine. And he had written 58 stage and screen plays, mostly original. Wow. So, uh, and, and in fact, I honestly, in the last week, I visited his home uh, where he, he lived and was able to finally see all of the, the places that he did stuff and, and uh, maybe working with the, the person that owns that house. Uh, anyway... It was phenomenal to see that and understand the true history. And as I've created the documentary, I have a very intimate knowledge of his his uh, life. Uh, and he wrote about it in American Cinematographer. I mean, he had a number of articles before he was 20 in that magazine. And I've known filmmakers who are still trying to get into that magazine writing articles. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Lyford was, was really something else. And this film was never released because, first of all, he was 20 years old and he was living in Seattle. You didn't have distribution. It wasn't like Indies. Oh, we'll put it on Amazon platform. No, he was doing 16 millimeter film. Mm -hmm. The real deal. In fact, this is where this whole thing came from, uh, th this can of film here. And um, he developed it himself. And this was kind of his thesis project for his imaginary film school, uh, as the earth turns. <laughs> imaginary <laughs> film school? Is it like yeah. his own professor or something? Well, he did attend UW, University of Washington, but I, I, don't, I think he was just taking general classes, and then he, he gave up on that. What had happened was, about the time he finished this movie, he was hired by Disney, mm -hmm. uh, and he went to Disney and worked on Fantasia, Dumbo, and Pinocchio, and then he went to war and worked with the Army Air Forces and then uh, did stuff in the Mideast. And this is all covered in the documentary. And then actually uh, worked, worked at Disney again on Wonderful World of Color. So uh, he, was, he was involved and he was generally successful in his life as a filmmaker. He was kind of a classic, you know, filmmaker that, that there's, to this day, there are the majority of filmmakers that are out there nobody knows. They're doing all the work. And that's what this guy was. But he was a great storyteller. And and one great story that that I was so happy to see when I walked in the house, this study, right as I walked in, because one of the great stories he I, I knew about is Richard Lyford, when he was probably 10 years old, could look at a row of books on the wall and look at the room of people in it and create a story on the spot using all the characters of, of everybody in the room to huh. thread a story. So really what he was was a great storyteller. And uh, film became his medium at one point. But he was also, you know, doing live theater in high school and things like that. Hmm. Um, one of the gals in As the Earth Turns, uh, Barbara Berger, was, uh, changed her name to Berger, B-E-J-E-R, B-E-R-J-E-R. -E -E and she actually went on to do a lot of soap operas and Broadway and stuff like that. Wow. She was really the only other person... Ironically, she was in as the earth as the world turns. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that that's another conspiracy. I gotta say that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta wonder what she was on that. What she thought. <laughs> and 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 what's really phenomenal about that is I invited the families uh, uh, to the Seattle International Film Festival premiere, and um, when I was inviting one of them, I was I was watching TV at the time. And I had looked at one of my emails to them, and they had names of people in the family, and one of them was Knut Berger. And I go, well, that looks familiar. I swear to God, at that same moment, Knut Berger was on public television staring at me on TV. Oh, my goodness. He, he does a, a show uh, about kind of history in the Northwest. Anyway, we got in touch, and he showed up, and he didn't know that his uh, aunt or what is it? I, I think it was, it was his mother. Well, anyway, his relative, uh, Barbara, 
was was ever in these movies in her teens. So we we we've really un, unraveled a whole bunch of mysteries out there of people that are involved in this stuff. Uh, so and what what's really going on now that's even more remarkable is after delving this deep on the documentary, I decided that the first twenty years are really where the most fascinating part of his life occurs. Not that say that everything else he did wasn't important. I mean, stuff he did in the Middle East was actually truly you know, important to humanity. But uh, the first 20 years are, are in my, the log. So anyway, I'm writing a biopic script about him. And that's my intention is to produce it into a film. And the log line, and I know this dates me a little bit, is Andy Hardy meets Orson Welles. Oh, yes. Andy Hardy. I remember that. Everybody seems to associate Orson Welles. And uh, you mentioned about Robert Lightford. He was like the pre-Orson Welles. And I guess I guess my question is, if he was still alive, it's like, do you think Orson Welles might have been in- influenced by Robert Lightford? Well, Richard, yeah. Richard, uh, I'm sorry. Well, I, you know, I don't think they ever met. Uh, but they were, again, they were very much contemporaries of each other. And, uh, and I think it's, had some things changed, Lightford would have been Orson Welles. Uh, but they they both you know did very similar things, uh, and 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 you know you could you could say well he, you know Lyford went to Disney and that's hardly a place you shine you tend to disappear into the the uh, culture of that, uh, but that that doesn't mean that was it. Uh, he was his own guy like Wells, and in fact you could say well Wells as successful as he was had his issues with Hollywood for sure. And after a certain point, he was making his own movies on his own terms, but they weren't always that successful. Mm -hmm. So I I think that was a similar thing. In fact, Disney himself, uh, because I have interviews with his son, with with Lyford's son, was very aware that Lyford was his own kind of a guy and, and told his son that one of the great strengths of Richard Lyford was his storytelling ability that he could... He did a lot of educational films, you know, uh, for tele- for uh, schools and things like that and, you know, corporate films. And and Disney had said, you know, he could tell the story of a train system better than any filmmaker he'd ever, you know, not, not the, you know, it was just his ability to string that together was very, very strong. Hmm. I can, um, I can, I can imagine that. And then, uh, how, how much of an input do you think, um, Richard had when it came to the storytelling of Disney? Did they like, you know, have all the input, like half of it or were they, were they just well, like oh, so, gotten, gotten his way a lot? So generally Lyford's relationship with the Disney company was very limited. In the beginning, he was only there for a year or two because he got drafted. Uh, and he was working, kind of doing technical work for him. What The reason why Disney was interested in Lyford, which is really fascinating in itself, was his the fact that he had done all these movies and won awards as a kid. I mean, he was making money making these movies. Not only that, they had a theater in their basement, <laughs> which, I, <laughs> which I've been in that basement now. And they were charging, you know, a couple of pennies a person. So that's how he was paying for his next movie. I mean, he, <laughs> he was never financially successful because he would have liked spending it on, a, on another movie throughout his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what he did, what, what Disney saw was, again, his technical ability uh, with special effects, uh, his art, his artwork, his, his I mean, he, Lifer did all his own signage. He raised money by doing signs for businesses, things like that. Uh, anyway... What, what, one of the other startling things he did was, like me as a kid, I was in Super 8, and I was always trying to join music and sound to film. And at that in the 1960s and 70s, you couldn't do that. There was a little bit of experiments going on with magnetic striping on, on Super 8 film, but for the generally, it was too expensive for me to deal with. So I would put records and reel-to-reel tapes against movies and see what I could do and kind of quasi-synchronize them. Lyford went through this same problem. Even though he was making movies in the 30s when sound was available to Hollywood, it certainly was not available in 16 millimeter to somebody in Seattle. So he was experimenting with dual turntables synchronized to projectors and even cameras. And his goal was to synchronize music and dialogue to his films. Wow. His his ability to actually succeed at that was very much something that Disney was was interested in because at that time I think Disney like many other companies especially with war on the horizon were thinking about industrial films military films where you're not going to carry around 35 millimeter cameras but they wanted to have ways to record audio with that as well. So again I think these were these were ways Lifeford got in. And and there's going to be there's 
a really phenomenal story that I'll leave to the, the listeners to catch on the documentary uh, about Lyford and, and one of his stunts at Disney. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love to hear this. I'm sure I yeah. would have been so called proud. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so what he in general, again, he was doing doing a f- uh, filming scenes that artists could. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell it. It's just too fun. Uh, that artists could uh, could use for modeling their animation cells to. Mm-hmm. So get this. So Lyford, he's he's out. And if you watch that as the Earth turns, there's a lot of explosions. You got trains, you know, crashing in the water, stuff like that. And th- and it's well done. These are models that he did, and it it's on par with uh, Flash Gordon of the Era and things to come. Certainly, you have to give him a little bit of space. For you know, a lot of it's not perfectly done, but again, he's a he's a teenager. Oh, and he's yeah. working with and, inferior equipment. He has zero budget, and he's making a movie that actually makes logical sense, has a true story to it, and so you don't even you don't care about the effects. You know, that's the thing. You, you watch great movies these days that have terrific effects, and they're boring as hell. Oh, no yeah. great story there, it, right? It, it, it reminds me of those Michael Bay movies, or it's like all explosions, but very little yeah. storyline to it. It's like, yeah. you know, what happened to the stories these days? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and this, and as your turn, this is an example of a, a story that's really there, and then the, the effects highlight what's going on. And, and you kind of go through this and go, man, what did I just experience? It's a 45-minute movie, too, so it's very watchable. Uh, you know, for anybody to see. Anyway, so he's at Disney, and uh, he's he needs to create a model for Fantasia, where the uh, I think it's the volcano explosion in that scene. You know, and uh, I think Night on Bald Mountain, and they wanted to have a model of that. So Lyford said, "Well, I'll I'll uh, I'll take care of this," and so um, he set up a giant pile of dirt you know made to look like a mountain and then he set off explosions explosives on it <laughs> <laughs> don't try Ma- this at home kid no no how about magnesium <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway so he blows this thing up it's quite a quite an explosion it's heard for miles this is in burbank at buena vista okay Ooh. so about 15 minutes after he blows this up he gets called to disney's office personally <laughs> <laughs> what did you do says, walt <laughs> mr disney would like to see you <laughs> you know it's not dick it's not richard it's Miss, or it, you know it's not walt it's it's mr disney anyway so he he goes to this he goes to the office and 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 disney says you know did, did you kind of do that thing we talked about <laughs> you know and he goes yeah yeah i did that he said well it it, it better damn well be good because at that moment Half of my artists doing precise cell animation, you know, <laughs> went right off the thing, and he lost he lost thousands of dollars of animation at that oh moment because they were all freaked out. The place rumbled, you know, and so he said, "I want to I want to see the wet stock right now." You know, anyway, he looked at it; it was great, and he said, "That was wonderful," but you know, just don't ever do that again. You know? and it, so. Slap. But but that that you know and that's kind of an example. I think Lyford took things the whole you know he didn't go halfway with stuff. His his ability to and and I've learned that lesson in my life. I mean I you know there, this is like a weird aside, but when I was a freshman in high school, I was percussionist, and we were doing the eighteen twelve overture, and I needed to be the cannon. So they got a five foot. A stretched hide bass drum from Northwestern nearby it was in, from Evanston, and and they gave me a hockey puck mallet, which is a gong mallet, and I took baseball swings. Now get this, I was under five feet; I could fit inside that bass drum, and I'm taking baseball swings at that head. On the dress rehearsal, I went through the bass drum head. Oh now, my in, goodness! In 1971, that was a seventy-five dollar head. You can do the math on inflation on Whoa. that. Whoa! Luckily, they had a backup. And I mean, that's a whole cow, you know, to do that. And and my, I remember the band director saying that was wonderful. But, you know, if you're going to break it, break it on the last note. And I'm like, yeah, how am I going to do that? Anyway, but that taught me uh, when you go after something, you go after it the whole way. You don't go halfway. And that that recording of that concert was considered really one of the great recordings of, of that high school. 
school. And when you hear the the cannon in it, it sounds like a cannon. I mean, the place rumbled. And I, I did similar things through college. So those were all kind of expressions of, of uh, I, I'm trying to think of the right word, but, you know, really going after things in your life, not going halfway when, when you have the ability and the tools to do it. Mm-hmm. So I think Lyford was like that. You know, he, he took risks, and there's going to be some interesting stories in the biop of him doing some rather radical similar things. <laughs> and, and, and it sounds rather interesting. You know, where can we find uh, It Gets in Your Blood as the Earth Turns and, um, and, and all of uh, Richard Lyford's works, and also uh, where can we find all your works at? Well, uh, my website is at hartmanmusic.com, and uh, if you just Google me, you will find me out there. And basically right now, as the Earth Turns uh, is – Again, on Amazon and Tubi. And it's going to be on Turner Classic Movies at 9 o'clock Pacific, uh, Halloween, October 31st, but midnight East Coast. And then, as I showed before, we do have a DVD of this thing. Um, I, there it is. And um, that has It Gets in Your Blood, the documentary, along with some other, uh, what I didn't really mention, but the, the films that started this whole thing go back to 2013. There was a couple of horror films that were mentioned in the classic horror film board some people that are heavily into horror history and film and they discovered some of lyford's stuff that's how it got connected to the great niece oh my. Uh, of lyford so this thing goes back in a lot of loops what's really amazing about this little story here this is the actual film of of the two two shorts that were in this weird video um something weird video <laughs> i can show you this We'll complete the loop here. So th- this is Monsters Crash the Pajama Party, a Halloween video <laughs> by Something Weird. Oh, anyway, my gosh. So, so what turn, it took me a while to get a hold of Something Weird. And as, when I finally got a hold of the gal who's the widow of the person who started that, it's kind of an exploitation cinema, educational film, something like that. Um, anyway, I got a hold of her, and it turns out she was two miles away from my house. Oh my gosh! I mean, that's crazy. And she got me the, the 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 actual film stock for those. So, not a lot of Lyford stuff remains. He did nine films as a youth. Um, only th- we all we have is as the earth turns in these fragments, which are very good. And if anybody's interested in the fragments, they are on the DVD as well. And they're phenomenal horror movies. One of them is kind of a Jekyll and Hyde, and the other one's a mummy type of a thing Mm. uh and these were really well done so and there's a few other bonus things on there there's a minute um that we discovered from as the earth turns i'm at the at the international seattle international film festival uh one of the other families the holtings who was the male lead in the movie um the family was there and they announced when i was doing q a there that uh they had another version of the film which scared the oh, hell wow. out of me because i didn't know if my edits were correct you know luckily <laughs> they checked out but there was 30 seconds of, of film on there that was not on ours and so i've add, and it was too late to add to ours uh i did add that onto the dvd and you can make a decision watching it should that be added onto the original it ain't gonna because it's it's done but y- you can watch it and go why did lifer take that out of one version and not the other it's a really fascinating test of the audience to, to you know it's at a critical moment too mm-hmm. you know it's but it's there's something peculiar about it i'm sure you can blame it uh, on the monsters uh crashing pajamas next thing you know what cats and dogs invade mars i mean what's that's next? right <laughs> yeah yeah that's right well, no, actually, one of his early films was called The Goddess of Mars. And uh, <laughs> so, you know. anyway, so so these films are out there. And as the earth turns dot com has all things, you know, on this, uh, there's connections. The backstory, the full backstory is on that website as well. That goes back to a stage 32 dot com blog of mine. Um, and I'm a, I'm a film composer. I'm always looking for. Uh, filmmakers to work with to score films as well uh so i'm i'm moving in many many different directions right now and and i actually have a little podcast i've developed meaning of filmmakers oh that's Um, really that's rather interesting we'll talk more about that and what's coming up uh for ed hartman just a minute it sounds like he's got a lot so i'll be ready for the ride you listen to the mike wagner show at the mike wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs also brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Also brought to you by a picture of this photo books. Remembering is a key ingredient. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picture of this photo books.com. We'll be back with composer, educator, and producer from Seattle, Washington of As the Earth Turns and It Gets in Your Blood, Ed Hartman. 
half of this time. This edition of the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Picture This Photo Books, where remembering is the key ingredient. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding, and even more so at yours. And who doesn't miss grandma's meatballs? The holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time? Whatever gift of grandma's recipes, or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809 or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Picture This Photo Books, bringing your memories back to life. They're whimsical, casual, or formal, and always uniquely you. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Me and Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We're back with the amazing, multi-talented composer, educator, and producer from Seattle, Washington, Ed Hartman here on The Mike Wagner Show. Just a great story about as the earth turns, Richard Leifert, it gets in your blood. And uh, we definitely love to have you back, Ed, and uh, talk more sure. about uh, your other projects. And speaking of other projects, what else can we expect in 2021 and beyond? Oh, man. Well, I, if I can finish this biopic about the first 20 years of Richard Lyford, then that, that's going to, I don't know what that's going to do to my life. But uh, <laughs> because that, that needs to be finished, it's almost done. Uh, I need to probably get help with the with the screenplay because I really have no business writing a screenplay. But I had no business becoming a filmmaker either. So what the hell? Um, anyway, uh, that that may keep me qu- quite occupied. Uh, as far as other films that I'm scoring, there's always filmmakers I'm working with uh, and and working on things like that. And then I continue to put things out on my YouTube channel as well and uh, and and, t- and teach music licensing. In fact, uh, for the first time, I'm going to work with somebody else to create an archived. Uh, music licensing class. Mm. Uh, I, I've been doing that again myself through a community college in Seattle and and online um, through one on one through Zoom, which has been great for that. Amazing. Uh, but but the there's there's going to be more of a formal archive class that uh, will allow me to kind of move forward on that as well. And okay. and that's something I really love doing because uh, it's it's detailed. It, a lot of people won't want to get into this, but it does take some understanding of business and all the rest of it. And, and, and what, you know, it's the same thing with filmmaking. What tends to happen with me is I start with a field and then fairly soon I start teaching about it. I, I've just never <laughs> believed in waiting to teach because what happens is when I start teaching it, I learn about it a lot more. You know, you, you, to teach it, you have to know the subject. And I, I've been teaching percussion for many years, many years. So, um, you know, I understand the, the amount of effort it takes to learn a subject for sure. But I don't think you should ever wait too long to, to start teaching because, again, you're, you're just going to snow yourself with a, a ton of information about it. And I've been in licensing for about 20 years. So mm-hmm. for me, that's not a long amount of time. <laughs> okay. And plus you also have your podcast as well too. And uh, tell us yeah. more about that. 
Well, it's it's something I just started uh, in the spring, and and I'm just starting to pick up again. I'm not at your level, Mike. <laughs> well, you're going to be the way you and Richard seem to think. That's it's right. Like, I give you a lot of credit, and uh, Ray said, "Go start." <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, I and you know it's funny because my wife listens to podcasts all the time, and I don't, frankly. I, I've never because I'm too busy doing other things. It's like listening to music. Anyway, uh, but I thought, you know, this is an interesting idea. If I'm talking to other filmmakers, I really love that idea. So it's called Ed Hartman's Wild World of Music and Film. And my really secret, um, what I'm really doing is trying to trick these filmmakers into hiring me, hiring me to f- score their films. You see, they don't uh-huh. know this at the time. But... Um, <laughs> But I found that in, in any in any field, if you really want to work with somebody, you got to get to know them. And you know, if you have an hour discussion with somebody, man, that's a great way to get to know people. I was just watching a movie last night. I'm going to do an interview with some filmmakers. Wonderful movie. I mean, really cool thing. And I would not have watched that movie regularly. So it's also forcing me to see things that are outside of my normal viewing, you know, direction that sort of thing as well. Mm-hmm. But it's a fun. It's the discussion where it's it's. I'm I'm trying to keep it on the music film side. That's my goal. Uh, it and I have interviewed a cinematographer. I may interview a music editor outside of the, the the directors. You know that sort of thing. And I'm trying to stick with filmmakers that have projects in distribution mm-hmm. uh, and features and things like that. Wow, that's amazing. And of course, you know, since you're trying to uh, trick uh, people into hiring you, I hire <laughs> you any day. So there's no well, secret. Hey. I have I have like five or six hundred tracks that are always available for people for licensing. So let me know if you need anything. Sounds good. We, we'll talk about it off the air. And we're with uh, Ed Hartman here on the Mike Widener Show. And uh, just a couple more things. We definitely love to have you back and uh, keep us up there. Um, what who who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Oh man, <laughs> just human being on the planet. I was I was pretty uh, taken by Rich, uh, William Shatner's uh, coming out of the uh, the capsule this morning. I saw. Uh, and, I heard about. Oh my that. God! That was that was. You know, I was waiting for somebody, an artist, to actually experience that. And that that's the thing. So I I don't know. My influences are wide and varied. As far as composers are concerned, um, it, many many Beethoven and the usual. But Hector Berlioz has always been. I felt closer to him, and he was a storyteller. I mean, uh, pictures and exhibition and uh, Symphony Fantastique especially are pieces that have stories involved or other art, and he really would have been a film composer if he had been born later or may have become John Williams for all I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, there, there are composers like that that, that have heavily influenced me in, in life. I like people that are dynamic, that have wide range of emotion, and feeling and music of the same thing if music is kind of you know kind of in the middle and just kind of hangs there it 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 doesn't always excite me but i i can listen to bach all day because of the intricacy complexity and perfection of what he did so each composer has a a slightly different you know viewpoint on on how they handle things and then it's in the film side you got to go to john williams but bernard herman predates Williams and he did a lot of Alfred Hitchcock wow. uh, North by Northwest stuff like that and and I even quote a little bit of, of Bernard Herman I didn't quote him but I, I there's a little bit of a tribute in as the earth turns which I'm really I, I'm really happy with that score because it's it's again it's got a classical influence but there's a a lot of people have said that what they like about it is to see a movie that's you know from the 30s it's it's not a 30s score it has 30s elements and an orchestration that would be somewhat from that era but uh i tried to create a not a heavy modernistic modernistic sense it's not electronic it's an orchestral score but like i added some organ uh in there and that's Mm. something bernard herman was famous for uh, and it, there, it adds just a, a charge to it when you hear those deep, you know, this, it's like oh, a drone. Yeah. And, you know, you listen to The Day the Earth Stood Still and uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. That's where you hear that sort of thing. So that was a heavy influence. Of course, growing up, watching those movies as a kid was just phenomenal. You know, those early sci-fi movies are still my, my favorite genre. So being asked to score a sci-fi film is really exciting. What, what's, what's kind of interesting, one more quick story here, uh, Richard Leifert, again, was synchronizing music to film, and I didn't find out about that until halfway I'm through the score. Oh I my. immediately become alarmed because that means he had a playlist. 
Oh, wow. He actually had cues written out, which we don't have any evidence of. Of how he had everything synchronized perfectly. That's why he had two two turntables working with that, and and the idea of thinking what would he have chosen, because when you're working on a film where the di- director is not alive, you're like, what do I do? Where do I even start? Mm-hmm. But luckily, my choices were fairly close to what I did find out from his son uh, that Lyford was loved his classical music, Stravinsky, Dvorak. Uh, and he remembered, is the kid remembered seeing those films. Uh, so in, in general, I, I'm actually pretty close to the, the direction uh, mm-hmm. he done. And, and his son was very kind about it. He said, you know, if that his dad had had a composer to work with, he definitely would have. He valued that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that sounds amazing and uh, rightfully so. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? As far as composing or whatever? Or just in general. In general. Well, uh, <laughs> I go by to my mother, who was a clinical psychologist, and whenever, I, whenever she would kind of review what I'm doing, she'd go, "Creative is good." <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that's all I remember. I just creative heard that. Is good. It, oh my creative gosh, is it's good. too simple. <laughs> it's too damn simple. But you know, and how often. I'm dealing with other people that are locked into situations that are not that way. It doesn't mean that any job can't be creative. It's just you have to find that creative thing, to, way to work on it. So, I, I, you know, the, the, that's one advice to it. It's like Shatner going up in a, in a spaceship. This is the first time somebody's kind of come back who's a true creative, who's is trying to talk about the experience of doing that. Not that you know, the, uh, they, they weren't talking about interesting things on the moon. But, the, you know, somebody like Shatner is a trained actor, writer, storyteller. He can express these things in so much better terms. So, you know, I, I, that's my, my recommendation. If you're a musician, composer, whatever that is, you're obviously you're thinking I need to be creative. But how often as musicians we play gigs where that's not the point? In mm-hmm. fact, I, you know, I really didn't become an orchestral musician because I just that I was not drawn to it, even though I was trained to do that. Uh, but the idea of just playing somebody's parts I just didn't thrill me. Not that I couldn't be creative of how I interpreted those or what mallets I chose or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I always felt, no, I want to create this stuff. I, I really want to make music from the start. And and I've I played my share of weddings and parties where. I tried to make it as creative as possible, and because I was playing wild instruments like vibes and marimba, most of the people that hired me were not looking for you know rock and roll cover bands. Although we did that, mm-hmm. but we did them on marimba. And <laughs> 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 you know, so every time we were pulling things out of our hat and making them kind of a little more wacky. So those were ways that I could express that creativity in what I do as a filmmaker. Now I'm presented with how do I how do I write a script based on somebody's life? And I know quite a bit about it. There's a lot I don't know. How do I thread the needle between truth and speculation and being creative and creating a story that has a beginning, middle and end. That's really exciting to watch. Oh my God. That's difficult because I've already created the documentary, which is more, here's his life. Mm -hmm. These are the elements of his life and with a little speculation, but that's, that's easy. I mean, it took a lot of work, but to do something, Again, a much more creative angle on this. That that's going to be a, that to me. That's a a truly epic challenge for me, and and staying within you know what I think Lyford was interested in. And you've done a great job as well too. Once again, Ed Hartman of um, a composer, educator, producer from Seattle, Washington, with As the Earth Turns, and also um, If It's in Your Blood and other works on the Mike Wagner Show. Ed, a very big thank you for your time. We got to have you back on, and love to more of your stories. Looking forward to having you again very soon. Make sure you keep us up to date, keep in touch, and once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact? Where can people purchase or or check out your works? Well, again, uh, edhartmanmusic.com pretty much links to everything. Uh, and you can contact me through the website. As the earth is the, the film website, and it has a lot of information on that as well. And they kind of cross link between them too. But I, you know, that, that's, that's the best way to go hold me. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all that nonsense. But, and I'm, I'm posting a lot about these films. I mean, a ton. Uh, I, you know, just the experiences I've had in the last several years of going to film festivals has been extraordinary and meeting filmmakers at those things too. And that, yeah. 
And that's amazing as well, too. Once again, Ed, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to having again very soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific. And we definitely wish you all the best. We got to do this again. Thank you very much. Picture this photo books where remembering is the key ingredient. Preserving memories, keeping the memories of your loved ones alive as they reach in and touch your heart. How beautiful your mother looked at her wedding and even more so at yours. The holidays are coming. What better time to give a gift of remembrance that makes you laugh and cry all at the same time. Whether it's a gift of past holidays, grandma's recipes, long ago moments, or just because, those smiles and tears will melt your heart. Call Karen Shaw at 646-798-0809. Once again, that's 646-798-0809. Or visit picturethisphotobooks.com. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.